Morning. It's November the 12th. Yesterday, 11.11, I was painting this amazing flamenco dancer in Dance Base in Edinburgh. And what I thought I would do, I forget her name. It was a lovely name and I can't remember it. What I thought I would do today is to do um, a representation of this in watercolour. So I'm just giving myself a few minutes to copy down the kind of feel of the pose, you know, while I still have it in me. Because I mean, when I was painting her yesterday, I could feel the kind of um, the drive up of the ribs and, you know, really wanting to embody the same kind of flamboyant shapes that she was uh, striking, like the poses that she was striking. OK, so let's see. I'm kind of perched on the end of the coach here, but well, yeah, it's going to have to do. OK, right. So when you're going to paint, I recommend that you have everything with an easy access. You want to be able to easily pick up the brush that's going to best explain what you want, what you're wanting to, to do. OK, so I'm going to start with the three quarter inch brush and I'll use the Jackson's orange, which is this lovely bright red orange color because I want to describe the skin. Yeah, I'm kind of feeling a bit weird the way that I'm sitting it because, uh, okay, that's all right. I'll just tolerate it now. Hmm. Sometimes it is worth just tolerating something when you're uh, on a roll rather than, like I know we want everything to be easily accessible, but also sometimes you kind of just need to get going. So there's that as well. Right, so that was a little bit dirty, that red orange which kind of suited me for the shadow side of the face but I want now for it to feel warmer and cleaner on this side so I've cleaned the brush a little bit more so there we have the face and that could be here but it's in quite a bit of shadow so happy for that to later be explained a bit more uh, in darker tones let's see right <laughs> and now the hand so it'll begin about here comes up to the open fan. She had a beautiful, long, slender figure and then this really dynamic way of striking a pose. Um, yeah, and you see the other hand in her hip there. Let's see if I can capture that as well. And then, of course, her foot, but I'm not going to chance placing that too clearly just yet because I'm not positive where it is. Um, no, yeah, I think I might actually still paint the background up to meet the figure as a way of explaining the white of the shirt. What will I use for that? What's this colour? I think this is a dollar blue. Yeah, I think this is indigo that I've got in my palette. So I'm going to see if I can manage to find the background in the shoulder here through painting the background up to meet it. So I'm going to paint the background up to meet the shirt, the lovely crisp white shirt. And uh, I'm using indigo blue for that. Yeah, where the cuff might be and then down for the kind of twist of the body how the hips come in and then there's the flaring out of the skirt which I might make into an um, opera rose I think opera rose has to be uh, that color has to be used today in order to um, I just think that the, the name of it is fantastic and she's such a flamboyant kind of character that uh, opera rose seems appropriate as a colour for her dress. Okay, so that's the background. I'm trying to capture something of the feel of the pose in that. And now I'm going to use the Van Dyke brown mixed with um, ultramarine blue in order to make a dark colour to describe the hair. Now that the face is almost dry enough, I think I can place the hair uh, here. Uh, and she's kind of, her head is tilted up the way, so there'll be a slant this way. 
the top of the head, I reckon. And I want to make it deeper and toned on there, so I'm putting some more blue into it before painting this side. To make it a kind of a sharper, dark color. Now if I don't do I'll be turning, I will turn the board. I want to turn the board so that the dark accumulates beside the face rather than down at the bottom of the board, at the bottom of the hair. Yeah, it's not going to stay there, but I'll do my best. Let's come back down again, let me, it's kind of stained. I think it's, it'll have stained up there a little bit. Okay, I'm going to put some of that um, indigo blue into the hair colour as well, because I want it to be darker again on this side. I think indigo is a good sharp dark. Um, I'm not doing this bit because that's still wet in the forehead and it seems to be important that the forehead stays um, light. And probably a bit of a splash there will work for the hair. And a smaller brush maybe. tilt of the head is probably going to be best described by the, just dry that off, by the forehead coming back here. Let's tilt up to the cheekbone and then kind of back, can you see, okay, and then back here, so the we're, it's kind of foreshortened and there's a small bit of hair at the top rather than lots of hair up here. Um, yeah, and then I'm going to put some red into that hair colour, cadmium red, in order to darken down the skin of the neck a little and maybe shift the chin up even a little bit more there. Okay. All right, now let's get something that's opera rose into that skirt. Yeah, I do, I do want to paint it this lovely bright colour. Okay, so that's the colour I'm aiming for with the skirt. Um, I think I put the hand out a little bit too far, <laughs> significantly too far actually. It'll maybe be in quite a bit farther there. Let's just see this land to the body going back. And that'll be the bottom of the skirt. A clear space to mix the colour. 